Okay, so the problem that we're trying to address, this is a wooden window and it's weathered quite badly. There's two reasons for weathering, really, in this part of the world. One is the sun. It's quite strong. UV is intense within our summer. The other thing is rain within the winter, because we've got winter rainfall here. So this is the north side of the building, in the southern hemisphere, that means it gets the sun. And our rain actually comes from the north. Well, northwest, but same difference. So you can see this is not looking too good. So up here where the brickwork protects it, it's nice. The sun is kept off it and the rain's kept off it. So we're going to add an awning to achieve that for a lot more of the window and protect it from the elements. So we need the awning to overlap a little bit on the left and the right so that it protects from the rain that comes from the sides as well as the light that comes from an angle. It doesn't only come straight down. Of course, let's measure up the window and then measure up the awning and get this show on the road. Right, so this is the awning, and it's got one that's a bit bigger than the, the window, so it's uh, wider, in other words. Getting about a 20, 20 centimeters on each side. It's got these big, big staples. I'm going to take those out, get the box open. I'm using the old trusty non-screwdriver screwdriver. The one get used for opening paint cans and, well, removing staples and things like that. Don't mess up your good screwdrivers. Get one or two old old ones and use those. I'm trying to keep track of them. They're quite, um, they're quite large. I wouldn't want to stand on one of those barefoot. Somebody likes their staple gun. And then the plastic handle. It's also being used as another form of attaching the top to the bottom. I tend to like these awnings because they tell you what tools you need, tell you what you've got inside the box. Yeah, um, I mean they're made in South, in South Africa, so probably a, a good thing. Try and uh, have domestic production, right? Jobs for people. Uh, this is the actual polycarbonate sheet, double multi-wall, as you can see, two walls, and various little ribs in it. And the other side, <coughs> that's the upside. All cable tied together, so let's go find something to take the cable ties off. Alright, so one trick, take uh, one of the big staples, straighten it on one side, straight on both sides if you want. And you can shove it into the cable tie, like so. And you lift up that little tab, it will release, and you can... Oh, there you go. One cable tie. Score. And if you get a stubborn one, using the point of a knife is even easier. Somewhat of a fiddly business. But if you're broke and you don't have cable ties, that's one way to build up your supply, right? By the way, I'm not pleading poverty, I just, I used to have to do things like that. And the one that slid off, it looks trickier, but I mean, bear in mind I'm trying to do this on camera. So if I wasn't trying to film it, I could just hold the... Take it out like that. Cool, little bag of tricks, open that up. Unfortunately, they've stapled this as well, and I'm like, I've done a little overkill on... Uh, making sure things don't get lost there. So you gotta appreciate them trying to prevent you from losing your uh, your hardware. Okay? Not one, but two staples. Oh, there we go. See, two staples, just to stop the bag opening. <laughs> I'm like, well, they're trying, right? They're trying. Yeah. So. That's the tape, which we need for later. And the four plugs. Two short bolts. Two long bolts. Four washers. Oh, look at that. Four screws. They've been very generous with the, the little screws. There we go. One packet. I just keep put them with the instructions so I don't lose them. So the two, two pieces of metal, which are the edges, and this is the one that comes out to the front. So you can see the multi-wall plastic clips in there. 
and we'll also clip into the other one so you can see and you start getting an idea of why we have four screws one there one there and obviously the other two ends down there and that just retains this clipped into these screwed on so all very cool it's really quite clever hey how it's done maybe you shouldn't show it before somebody starts knocking it off right in america or china let's get assembling pretty decent instructions uh you know like what it, what all comes in here and the tools you need uh one thing i do notice here they talk about uh, checking the aluminium foil so that is on here already so that extra bit of tape there is just in case this has been damaged then you can touch up you know any spots where you know, it's maybe missing and they also say leave this sticker on until you install it but the sticker is the upside because this side has got uv protection in the plastic and well you know the other side does not so you don't want that side facing the sun and yeah they mentioned the little screws go on the ends like that which makes sense and yeah on both corners that corner and that corner so that's why we have four two there two there into the metal so the only thing that i can tip i can give you right now is when you slot this back piece in make sure this see here it's one end longer than the other this is the upper surface which should then be you know the sticker side otherwise it's not going to fit in the, the bracket try and get that on over that so i'm having a heck of a time trying to get this aluminium profile to well, fit over this piece of plastic multi-wall sheeting so i'm going to just peel this back on both sides there's you know, a sticker here on top that's the one that they're printing on to say it's the UV protected side. And there's another one on the bottom, which is the clear one to prevent damage to it. So I'll do that. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and open up this uh, this square channel or rectangular channel, but it looks like a bit, seems slightly narrow to me. And between those various actions, hopefully we will have it fitting. All right, so I'm going to try and use a couple of pieces of just hardboard is what we call this stuff but I'm gonna stick it in there and just you know wedge it in there and put it backwards and forwards so wedge it in then try and use gravity to help there we go my weight in other words <laughs> and then jam it in again and go the other way Things you have to do when it doesn't want to fit, eh? So yeah, there's been quite a bit of pressure. My hands aren't too happy with this. I was using your foot, might be. This might come out then. There we go. Easy way. Okay. Hopefully that's uh, stretched this out ever so slightly and makes life a bit easier. Yeah, I thought of another way to make this a little bit easier. Can actually crush these little multi wall uh, bits just with your fingers. Uh, squash. Not all of them, just and only slightly. Could also use a pair of pliers, I suppose. And the only other thing I can think of is to put lube on here, like O ring lube, to make it fit. Because you could also use the corner of your, your boot to squash it into place. They say when all you got to level, every problem is a, a nail, right? <laughs> so good news, squashing it with a level, of all things, has made it much easier to well, get it to fit where it's supposed to. Well, whether it's unfortunate or fortunate, you need to get this to seat properly here. Because otherwise, the panel plus the aluminium profiles on each side well, well they'll be longer than the uh, arc of this arm so that would be bad cool 
great success. So now I've got the curve profile on the one side. That's all the way in, so that's good. Let's make this, this side a little bit easier. Ah, great success. So top tip, uh, start at the bottom. It hooks in here nicely. You can see there's a, a place where it hooks in. Otherwise, if you're pushing from the top, then it's trying to push past this. But if it's already on here, then pushing in it is just help take the bend and then fit into this groove. So you can see it's starting to take shape now. Uh -huh, literally. <laughs> it's got a curve in it. So that's good. So we grab our little screws, which are these ones here, and a proper screwdriver, not the paint one, and screw them in. Having a look, they're all uh, a posi drive to me, so get that bit. There's a little hole in there, made perfectly for this. Try to get it on camera. Well, there's the hole. Here we go. I put the screw in the hole, now it's much easier to see where it is. Anyway. Cause just moving it around and the other side's popped off already. It does that until you put these screws in. So let's try and get the next one in. This little screwdriver does not have enough grunt. So let's get a bigger one. Oh, there it goes. Lost one already. Take down the torque. Required to slip. Anyway, there's the screw. Yeah. And we've lost this already. <laughs> so it goes. These are awkward things at the beginning. Now that it's popped off, I can show you again. That's what I recommend you start on. I just turned around to help me push down. Easier than fighting gravity, right? Yeah. Stop it from escaping a second time. We'll just uh, screw straight in. I think this is when you need smaller fingers, right? This is the arrangement that will be used to attach it to the wall. So we'll drill four holes, two on each side, and put our large wall plugs in. And then we'll screw the culch bolts through. The long ones are at the top, and the short ones are at the bottom. Obviously, uh, the weight wants to pull this away from the wall like this. So this is getting compressed into the wall. That's why that's the short bolt. And then for the other side, obviously, there's you know the same arrangement. So let's get marking. And yeah, at this point, it's a lot of it's going to be using the level for its intended purpose and trying to mark out the holes accurately. I think one of the tricks is to try and get this thing uh, centered nicely over the window because it's going to overhang on each side. Right, so it's getting the draw bit ready. Uh, these things actually say 10 mil by 50 on here, which is quite useful to know. And you can also double check it like that, but I mean, look, they're correct. So I'm just going to mark this off at 50 and you use the wall plug plus a tiny little bit extra on there. And <clears throat> tape it's a depth gauge yes there's a depth gauge here but why you know sometimes I'm like why bother so there we go easy peasy way of doing it alrighty let's go measure some uh, mark some holes and then after that we will be doing the the drilling grab that level so bear in mind there's a lintel above most windows I'm gonna go 10 centimeters up pretty much my standard to get above a lintel just to put at least to draw the hole. That's my center point there. Yeah, I'm just going to measure out each 
next way and then I'll have my points for my drill. Just the bottom ones. It's the old uh, spirit devil extender. Very handy device. Takes many forms. There you go. And then I measured the, the height above here and it's about well, it's 183 millimeters. It's not about, it is. Okay, just trying to clear this out quickly before put the plugs in. Sometimes the drill bit is not so good at clearing the dust. Really more of a two-man job than a one-man job, but hey, let's give it a go. slight gap there between the aluminium and the wall and that's where you'd add some silicon from the top so I'll do that and there we go that's what we have it for a warning now